many of you probably know a lot more about social media and what's happening with you guys in high school than I do. But there are certain things that I do know that I hope are going to be helpful for you today. So um, I'm, I'm going to hope to give you some of those. So first I'm just going to um, show you this picture. How many people recognize the woman in this picture? Three or four of you? Who is it? Monica Lewinsky. How many people now recognize the name, Monica Lewinsky? Okay, good. I'm glad that some of you recognize the name. Okay, so this is a provocative way to begin a talk, right? Because Monica Lewinsky is known for something that's pretty infamous, right? She had an illicit relationship with Bill Clinton, the President of the United States at the time. And she was just like you guys in a lot of ways. She had a lot of goals. She had a lot of dreams. She was working as an intern in the, in the White House. How many people would love that job? You'd love to work in the White House someday in some capacity. Raise your hands. You'd like to do that someday. Okay. Because some people are saying never. Some people are saying yes. Okay. Here's the thing is Monica Lewinsky is a lot like you in that she had big dreams. And those dreams really came crashing down when she was involved in this very public scandal. But she's given a TED Talk on this topic. And it's entitled, exactly what's up there, The Price of Shame. And Monica Lewinsky believed that, yes, it was horrible for her. What she endured was really, really hard. But it is nothing like what she would have endured had this happened now. Because had this happened now, what would have happened? Monica Lewinsky sleeps with the president and then, or you know, does, has inappropriate sexual relationships with the president, and it's tweeted. It's put all over social media. She would never be able to forget. Like with Justine Sacco. How many people know Justine Sacco and this tweet, this very famous tweet? Read it. Oh yeah, it's controversial. It's controversial. Raise your hand if you've heard of this story before. Heard of this story before. Justine Sacco should have known better. She did public relations. She got on a plane to go to Africa and she said something very inappropriate on Twitter. She said it as a joke, but it was incredibly inappropriate. While she was on the plane, how many people have been to Africa? You guys have been to Africa. Raise your hand, you've been to Africa. It's a long plane ride, right? While she's on the plane, this tweet gets retweeted millions of places, goes to all sorts of news sources. When she arrives in Africa, she has lost her job, and her reputation has suffered irreparably. Monica Lewinsky committed an error. She made a mistake at a time when it wasn't resonating through the media constantly. When you make a mistake now, you cannot forget. There is a high price of shame in today's society. If there's one thing that I want you to take with you from this talk, and starting with it is a good way to do it, it's that there is a high cost of mistakes. All of your parents, all of your teachers, we've all made mistakes. You guys may have already made mistakes. But your mistakes are not forgiven in today's culture because they are permanent marks on your record. So, how many people have heard of a digital footprint? You've heard of a digital footprint? Okay, so a lot of you have heard it. I'll just tell you really quickly. It's, it's all of your digital presence. It's everything that you have ever posted online. How many of you think you have a rather small digital footprint? You have not posted a lot. Raise your hands high. I want to see. You have a rather small digital footprint. You have not posted a lot. You're not on a lot of social media. How many people have a pretty large digital footprint? You use social media. You have posted a lot. Okay. Here's the myth about a digital footprint that no one told you. Okay? The myth is it is not a footprint. Because you know what happens with footprints? They disappear. Unless you step in cement, it's gone. It's gone at some point. It's really, and it should be called, a digital billboard. Because everything that you put out there is potentially there forever. Even if you erase the messages. What can you do? What will people do if you erase the messages? Take a screenshot. They'll take a picture of it. Whatever you post could be there forever. And that is very important for you guys to remember. Every time you post something, every time you write something on social media, you need to think, is this something that I want people to remember forever? When I used to have arguments with friends, or arguments with a partner, or discussions with people, and we had them face to face, guess what happened? They disappear. After they happen, we both have our side of the story. And my side might be very different than someone else's side, and it's maybe very different than the truth. 
these things that you're writing do not disappear. There is evidence forever, and that can affect you forevermore. So how can it affect you? How many of you want to have a job at some point in your life? You want to have a job? Raise your hands. I, I, want, I want almost every one of you to want to have a job. Okay. I mean, this is a good thing. You want to have a job? How many of you would like to go to college? You would like to go to college. It's funny because you're like, yes, college, maybe on the job. Maybe the job, definitely college. That sounds fine. It is fine. Your college recruiters and your future employers are looking at your digital footprint. They will Google you. They will Google your first name. They will Google your last name. They will Google your first name and your middle name and your middle initial. They will Google John Smith Fort Wayne. They, if they know you were involved in cross country, they will Google John Smith cross country. They will Google John Smith Canterbury. They will Google because they want to know everything about this person that they're letting into this university or this job. 80% of employers have a social media policy. If you look at what recruiters are doing, 93% of job recruiters look at social media, and 43% of them have reconsidered a candidate based on their social media. Now, there's something that a lot of you probably do. How many of you have a social media account that does not include your f real first name and last name? It doesn't, you have a social media account that does not, this is a good thing, you can raise your hand for it, it does not include your real first name and last name. How many people you do have a social media account that includes your real first name and last name? That is going to be much easier for people to find. Okay? I am not suggesting that you do anything that's dishonest. However, you should really be aware that if it is associated with both your first name and your last name, it will be much easier to find. Okay? Um, here's a story. This is a man. His Christopher Brooks. Christopher Brooks was an English major. How many people in here would like to do something with English writing, some type of writing job? Uh, he got a job with the Wilmington Daily News. And he tweeted about it. And he said, I just got a job offer from the Wilmington Daily News right out of college. And some of you know it's a tough market. Getting a job is kind of difficult. Immediately, he was told that the offer was rescinded because they have a zero tolerance policy for any social media that mentions their work. Totally had a job, the next moment did not have a job because he said that he got this job. Another person, Ashley Heffron, she was given $100 by her employer and she went to social media and said, I was wowed by this today. My employer gave me $100, that was awesome. She was immediately fired. Immediately fired because again, they have a zero tolerance policy for social media. A lot of the universities that you guys are going to be going to do not yet have really refined social media laws but it is coming. Those of you who are thinking about your college applications, what you post about that college application, what you post about accepting that offer is going to be visible to everyone and if forwarded to the university, then that can have dire consequences. If you say, I got into my safety school, that could be really damaging. There was a man in California, he posted about the fact that he was, he's going to sell his soul and start working for an oil company. And he said, well, I'm gonna do it because I will take the money. Offer was rescinded because you know what? He said something defamatory towards that company. You guys need to be very, very careful. It can cost you your futures.